Yo, man, the verdict just came in. Tory Lanez is found guilty on all three charges, man. Um, for people who don't know, sentences could be um as high as 22 or 25 years. Yeah, yeah it is. A, it is a lot, man. It is a lot. You would think he murdered her. No, dead ass though. Yeah, um, I think I think one of them might. This been, country I, is crazy as hell. One of them might have been attempted. If he was, if one he, of I about to say, I heard attempt. I could be wrong. I heard attempted murder. When you when you get attempted murder, you're sometimes higher than actual murder. Like like the the years the amount of years this go that goes into it you get sentenced for more I don't know if that's true or not. Them is attempted murder. Yeah. So for those who don't know, um, maybe because you attempted it and it didn't like it didn't work out, so now they gotta they gotta violate. Like you could. <laughs> We actually did a, um, a video last week kind of covering over the first um, week the of the trial, two-week trial. Meg took the stand, told her side of the story. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, long story short, after Tory leaving bugging. the Kylie Jenny. Tory bugging. First of all, they never called Kylie Jenny to the, to the stand, which is interesting, too. Tory bugging. I would have got on that stand and told niggas, like, look, I ain't do this, I ain't do that. Niggas want to say that snitching. Nigga, you put your life in the hands of other people, nigga, and this is what happens. Jenner uh, kickback party. They went into the car. Met the stallion, Tory Lanez, Kelsey Harris, and Quan, the bodyguard slash driver, were all in the car. There was a verbal altercation. The climax of that um, com confrontation was um, Meg slandering Tory's rap career. Yeah. She then gets out the car. Tory grabs a gun and somewhere near around the car, around the window, shoots at her feet um, three to five times and tells her, dance, bitch, dance. The story itself sounded a bit uh, hyperbolic, a bit colorful. So that's why a lot of people are waiting for more information to come out. Her best friend, Kelsey Harris, took the stance in a deposition back in September, this year, September, even though the events happened two years ago. In a deposition, she claimed that she more or less cooperated with Meg's story. Maybe a few details here and there weren't the same, but more or less cooperated, saying that she saw Tory Lane shoot Meg. She then takes a stance, however, last week, says a lot of things that I said um, a week in, in the deposition were lies. I'm here now to straighten the lies, and not only did which is crazy because she had to get immunity to do that shit, right? Got immunity and still didn't even tell the full truth. Pled the fifth and all that, I understand. Even though with the, the deal that she got with immunity, it's basically like, it saves her from being, from one, incriminating herself and any further prosecution after the case. It's crazy. Still pled the fifth. So that's telling something. She's not telling the whole story, in my opinion, but hey. She not really straining any lies. She started pleading the fifth, saying that I didn't see anything. She said she didn't know. Mm -hmm. Really got nowhere with that. So this past week, the um the two witnesses that we saw, the two people they brought to the stands were EJ, which is Meg Thee Stallion's hairstylist. Um, and he basically just confirmed that there was a lot of drinking going on. A lot of, you can definitely argue, slandering Meg's credibility. And then also a neighbor who um unequivocally said that he saw a fight that did transpire before the uh, shooting occurred. Now the um, witness as a uh, neighbor, he claimed that he saw he saw some pew pews go off near a woman and also saw some pew pews go off near the shorter man, the shorter man being Tori, you know, Tori is a bit short, and Quan, the bodyguard, he's a bit taller. He said he definitely heard and saw a verbal call altercation happen between Meg. That information, as you can speculate, that old girl, her friend, I don't know if you ever seen my face, her friend could have maybe shot at both of them. And Kelsey, he also saw he saw a physical altercation between those two as well. And then he claimed that after the filter altercation was broken up by one of, if not both men, allegedly Kelsey went to the car, or one of the women went to the car, got a pew, got the pew pew machine, then pew pewed towards another woman's direction. That kind of brought up the situation of the idea that Kelsey might have actually been the one who um who pew pewed at Megan. So that was his side of the story. The problem though with, with his side of the story, he also claimed that one of the women got jumped by all other three individuals and then also was trying to drag them to the river. So who, who knows, this who knows? His story was awesome. very colorful yeah. as well. So who knows what happened? My takeaway from this is A, I didn't think that there was enough evidence to um, convict Tory on all three. Um, in terms of him possessing a firearm, that was pretty, you know, I mean, that, it was kind of tough for him to get out of that, especially because there's too many people who claim that they saw him with a weapon. He, there's a lot of things that point out that he did not pew pew make the stallion. And more importantly, uh, I think it is very interesting how they came to that conclusion, especially because the jurors, after talking about it for a while, just... Without reasonable doubt, bro, that means every single one of these motherfuckers believe that you did this shit. And with the evidence, bro, that's crazy, bro. I know jurors are not supposed to be biased towards shit, but... Public opinion definitely matters, bro. That shit's sweet. I feel like it's sweet. It. Like, to the point where it's like evidence don't even matter, bro. Proven into, uh, proven into uh, innocent until proven guilty, doesn't matter, bro. If niggas have this 
assumption about you or you kind of carry yourself as such in the media, bro. Especially with this kind of, uh, kind of, uh, um, personality that Tory got. Kind of like the short Napoleon complex, angry short dude, bro. And you shooting women, you don't really, you be talking how you talk about women, bro. Bro, that shit matters, bro. Yes. These are people judging you. Regular nine to five people, just regular human beings, bro. Niggas just gonna have their own assumptions about you and not gonna like you. Even though you're not supposed to be biased, let's keep it a beat. Niggas are human. They're gonna be biased. Today they decided they wanted to re-listen to the uh, recordings from the um, interview from Kelsey back in September. They decided that that's what they wanted to more so rely on. So the, another takeaway I get, get from this is, bro, the LAPD um, and really everything was yeah, just a four. joke to me. The whole trial was a joke. Yeah, you know, LAPD the trial makes me very nervous. Like, yeah, LAPD was more, also more than Georgia PD anywhere here. Atlanta, Cobb. I would rather go to Clayton County and get caught up than go to fucking LAPD. I don't know why, bro. I just there's they, a few things about this case that were interesting to me. One witness. Let's keep it being because LA is a funny ass place. It's a funny ass place, bro. LA, the politics and just how niggas carry themselves and just how they portray LA to be, bro. And you gotta think about the police, bro. It's funny, bro. All those things mixed in, shit is weird. It's definitely weird. Testimonies are notoriously inaccurate. That's because the human <laughs> brain fucking sucks. I remember watching a show on it on Netflix. I think it was called like Brain Games or something like that. Yeah. And he played a test to see how much you can remember in the events of a crime. And it was astonishing how inaccurate and inefficient the human brain is at remembering small details, yeah. which is why witness testimonies aren't usually the primary source of evidence when you're trying to convict somebody. Yeah. I mean, assuming it's the same in this country, in Canada, when you're in criminal court, you have to get the jurors to believe beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the mm -hmm. standard. Yeah. Beyond a reasonable doubt. And I would struggle to believe that this was beyond a reasonable doubt, mainly due to the fact that there was no... The DNA results were inconclusive, so there was no way to prove exactly. that Tori was the one that actually shot it, yeah. except for witness testimonies. But the witness testimonies are even weaker due to the <laughs> fact that they were all drunk. And so the only yeah, person in this true. situation that probably had a sober testimony would be the neighbor, but, but that then his story yeah. sounded crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. too. It, it all sounded crazy. Yeah, so, so people all of that being said, doesn't it doesn't mean he did or didn't do it. It just means that I can't possibly believe that it happened beyond a reasonable doubt, but that's me. Look, at the end of the day, witness tampering exists. Kelsey said a whole bunch of things on record, and then next thing you know, she's trying to back up from those statements saying, oh, I don't know, like, I'm not sure, I plead the fifth, that wasn't true, I, I honestly, I didn't even know why I said that. I'm, I'm actually surprised the judge allowed her to stay on the stand that long, because even when we were getting information- Yeah, that was crazy. I don't get it, bro. She's probably the, the best possible witness, because she, she literally is right there on the front lines of whatever's going on, you feel me? And... Look, bro, that sh she still pled the fifth. I think she was saving her ass, which makes sense. She got her immunity deal. Uh, um, she's not going to be prosecuted. She don't give a fuck. <laughs> she don't give a fuck about nothing for real, bro. She don't give a fuck. She got, she got her situation. She got up out of there. Tori is crazy. I would have got on that stand. Y'all niggas is bugging out. Like, bro, you leaving your hands in the life of these, these, other, these other possibilities, nigga. Get on that stand and tell your side of the story, bro. Nigga, nigga's too cool for school, bro. Now you booked. Information from it, and to be also to be fair, the information the public was receiving was very exclusive and selective to whatever was given to us. So it's not like we have everything. Kelsey could have been on the stands the place, sweating yeah. profusely while she sat there and was rearranging her story. Like we 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 actually don't know. The whole thing was crazy. Oh, let me say this about the DNA thing. Yeah, for people out there who don't know, because it is true. Um, Tori's DNA or fingerprints was not found on the magazine. However, the DNA and fingerprint on the gun was inconclusive. However, both experts that came from both the defense and prosecutor side, they both sat there and said, if he did indeed handle the gun and pew pewed three to five times, they would believe that his, his fingerprints would be on the gun pretty pretty co concretely. So the simple fact that that wasn't there is also interesting. Think However- wearing, You think he was wearing gloves? Um, but then if- Man, fuck out. Coming, bro, bro, wearing gloves coming from a fucking a party, a a, a, a pool party at that? No. If he was, I no, I don't think so. Did he cleaned it? So that was the other conversation. However, if he cleaned it, both Meg, they, I think both Meg and Kelsey's story would have said that he cleaned it before the police came. And then when you go look back at it, if I'm not mistaken, Tori was the first one out the car already laying on the ground and then Meg and then Kelsey came out. So if I'm not mistaken, Kelsey was the um, last one who came out the car. I could be mistaken about that. This is not like, um, 
Bro, just that fast, your fucking life changed, bro. You get me? Like, bro, that fast. Law and order, bro. <laughs> it's not like they just get a bunch of semen sample and like, ah, hey, ah, and he's like, oh, I got it. They just sit there and examine it like, yeah, that's it right there. 30 years, got him. Got him. That's not, that's not how it goes. I remember we, I got robbed before at my, um, at my house, and the people who robbed me opened up the window, picked up a glass, put it to the side, and then hopped in our, our house and our, um, hopped in the window to our house. And they were not able to, even though he was a touch and shit, if you can borderline get his fingerprint on the damn glass, it just, it wasn't enough to actually get uh, a clear match. So this isn't Batman Arkham Asylum. Way more to it. And fortunately, everything was Batman inconclusive. The reason why I said the LA PD thing is crazy is because somebody even even though originally Meg had sat there and said she stepped on glass and that was her original that was another thing too bro the stories got flipped so fucking much bro first nigga said I stepped on glass then nigga said I got shot then niggas is talking about some uh I think the the dude who did forensics said like like nah she didn't get shot like I don't bro I don't know bro after a while, that shit get annoying because it's like, bro, it's too many stories. And then when it comes to social media, bro, you can put out whatever narrative you want. Now, when it comes to hardcore evidence, hardcore facts, now that's a different conversation. But the he say, she say shit, and then we get in pieces of this argument and pieces of, of the story, bro. It makes it, one, hard to keep up with, and two, like, it's, like, unreliable and unrealistic as some of these stories. And it's, like, I don't even want to hear this shit. But, like, at the end of the day, personally, my, my opinions on the situation is, boom. If Sun shot Shorty, he's a, he's, a, he's a fucking bozo. Come on, what are we shooting women for? Fuck just black women and all that. Like, I love my black queens and all that. Just shooting women in general. Is, women and kids is already crazy. Shooting people is already crazy. Women and kids, come on, my nigga. Y'all niggas got this. Come on. Get your sister or something to fight the bitch or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Niggas is bugging out with that, but yeah, that's crazy. And then like, if if on the other hand niggas is lying, bro, and they got to double down, cause after you sell a, tell a lie, you got to sell a lie, my nigga. You can't you can't retract the lie once it's, once the lie has been rooted and you done seeded the lie, cause then now this shit is gonna grow. So now you got to grow with it. You got to keep lying and keep watering the lie until this shit blossoms into a whole big lie, and then it is what it is at that point. But you know what I'm saying? Either way, bro. I don't really have an opinion on it too much. I think niggas, niggas is not telling everything, which is obviously true because old girl got on the stand and did some funny shit. The niggas' stories is all like some movie shit. Everybody got some crazy ass stories. Not like it's not one reasonable story was like ah I could believe it. Like besides a son that was uh, watching shit from the porch, but he just started saying some other shit. He was off the he was off the perks, bro. Promise. Story that was the original original story. Exactly. They got called because of the gunshots, and they got there. And for whatever reason, Kelsey's fingerprints nor Quan's fingerprints were ever taken. To me, that's that's the reason why it was lazy. Even the way that they talked about it and they discussed yeah, and who they interviewed and how they did things, all of that was lazy. It was a lot of things that I just it, the, yeah, the sad like part about it is even though um, Meg believes that Tori did it, I don't believe that even I would I would assume that even after everything and hearing what everybody had said especially having your friend come up there and her whole testimony just shifts completely and then somebody else saying something else drastically different from your story even though yes meg sat there and said that he did it and now he's in jail i don't i don't i don't even if meg is there i don't think that she's really even still pleased with how everything yeah, transpired herself so, like everybody just went through her personal business and her her friend yeah, literally switched up her whole story about what in the Regardless, Tori took an L, but Meg took an L, too. They violated her through this trial. I got to say that. I, I agree with that. They violated. Pulled up show your sex history. But that's what they do, bro. They discredit you, and you feel me? And they rip apart your personal life and your just day-to-day -day shit. So that was to be expected, so to speak. If they trying to, you feel me? They trying to get the conviction. They trying to, trying to, you're trying to convict Tori, but they trying to tear you down because they want you to seem as... As non-reliable as possible. Like, how could she po how could she possibly say he did it when this is the kind of shit she... You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what they do. That's not just on, on Megan. That's what they do in the judicial system in general. Like, <laughs> if y'all look at any case, they want to they wanna make it so you're the villain. You're 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 the most undespicable person in the world. You would do anything to, to say this or do that. Like, 
you're a criminal. You know what I'm saying? Or you're not trustworthy. Or you're not... Niggas, sh people shouldn't believe you. You know what I'm saying? Like, ended up happening that night uh, at the last minute, and you thought that that was gonna be your actual best um, yeah, eyewitness, and come up. to find out it wasn't on the trial. So, sure. hey man, I, I Meg got what she wanted, but I I don't think anybody genuinely anybody who's following this do not does not believe that there was enough evidence to convince him without a reason, with beyond a reasonable doubt, um, for Tori to be convicted on all three though, yeah, and that's that's the sad part. I think. Crazy part. Part. I, I think he became a fiasco, or maybe one yeah, out of kind of like the um, all three. Johnny Depp trial, where it became entertainment for a lot of people, and yeah. people began to pick sides and affiliations and ride with that side that's and affiliation. I, that's why I think the, I'm gonna stop it right here. I did, that's where I'm gonna let him finish, but that's why I feel the jury like kinda like yeah, you're not supposed to be biased. Like it's it a jury and shit, like but like they got social media, they got the newspaper, they can see certain shit. So it was like, bro, probably biased. <laughs> it probably was like, up oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. Because there's no way. And Come on, bro. All Both three. These guys do not know who you are and do not care about you. Some people are making it to a black woman <laughs> issue. It's not. In all reality, when a crime is going on in a vehicle, unless someone is recording, you're kind of relying on witness yeah. testimonies and DNA. Because how else are you supposed to get evidence? Like, the truth is elusive, and there's no way to verify anything. The system is not perfect at all. In fact, there's millions of fucking flaws in it. And so what? I'm pretty sure Tori's going to maintain his innocence. Like, he's not ever going to... I don't think he's going to come out on a documentary and be like, yeah, I shot that bitch. I told her dance, bitch, dance. I think this just became entertainment for a lot of people. And just to also be fair, because I think like, many people who are saying that Tori didn't do it or he's, there's not enough, to, to be fair to Meg's side, I think, and I also think, to be fair to the jury, because I think a lot of people are trying to figure out, like, how did they come to this conclusion? I think what ended up happening is the... The whole court case was such a shit show that mm -hmm. I think a lot of the... I'm telling you, bro, they was over it. Shit dragged out for two years, and then public perception, and then what shit looking like. And they was like, bro, fuck it. Send this nigga to jail. Unfortunate, bro. Uh, hopefully we find out what really happened, or we see, like, you feel me, the information that niggas did get, man, and hopefully shit works out. I don't fucking know, man. But yeah, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Like, comment, subscribe, man. We out there, man. Grr. Wow.